Hi everyone, welcome back. If you are new, please consider subscribing. My name is Yadi and I make educational videos for beauty professionals in training and for those who like to continue learning. In today's video, we are going to be doing a full theory of understanding skin analysis. We are taking you back to basics. This will not be a short video. This will definitely be a long one, but definitely worth your time. So you guys, I hope you stay with me for the entire video. Remember that information is not limited to the one shown in the video, and it is definitely not meant to replace any type of teaching from a licensed facility. But you guys, if you find the information helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, send it over to someone who you think could find all of this information helpful. Thank you so much for being here. Give this a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Let me know in the comments down below if you do. With that being said, let's get started. Let's go back to basics, the process of skin analysis. Let's face it, being knowledgeable about skin types and conditions is one of the most important parts for a skin care professional. This interaction with a client set you up as a skin care expert. Recommendations for the appropriate skin care treatments and products must be customized to each person. The skin analysis is the determining factor in deciding what products to use during the service and what products to recommend for home use. The skin analysis also confirms whether the client is an appropriate candidate for the treatment. Before performing services or selecting products, an individual skin type and condition must be analyzed correctly to determine the appropriate treatment and products. Identify the four genetic skin types through visualization, palpation, and consultation. Skin type is a classification that describes a person's genetic skin attributes. Skin type is determined by genetics and ethnicity. But like everything else, skin can change over time. Generally, skin becomes drier over time because our cellular metabolism and oil lipid production slows down as we age. Skin type is based primarily on how much oil is produced in the follicles from the sebaceous glands and on the amount of lipids found between the cells. The T-zone is the center area of the face corresponding to the letter T-shaped formed by the forehead, nose, and chin. Evaluating the pores in the T-zone is the first step in determining skin type. All skin types need proper cleansing, exfoliating, hydrating, and protecting. Finding the right treatment plan for each individual can be challenging, and this makes the esthetician's role even more interesting. Mastering this skill is necessary before learning about which product and treatments to choose for each person when we perform the skin analysis we are using our visual abilities often under magnification to note properties in the skin such as pore size or irregularities in the skin. We use palpation to examine the skins through touch, manipulating it to determine conditions such as oiliness and elasticity, and we use consultation, conversing with our clients to determine lifestyle and dietary issues that impact the skin. Skin types are categorized as follows. We have normal, combination, oily, and dry. Again, normal, combination, oily, and dry. The oil hydration balance is easily affected with combination skin. Oily skin ages more slowly because the oils acts to protect the skin. So hey, it's not all that bad if you have oily skin. Dry skin. Dry skin can have compromised transepidermal water loss and normal skin. Normal skin often changes as we age. So yes, if you currently 
believe you have normal skin, just know that it could possibly change over time, which is why monthly facials as preventative care are extremely important. All right, you guys, so now let's move on to a few skin type guidelines. We are going to be starting off with talking about normal skin. What does it look like and how does it usually feel? oil production so it's very balanced normal skin has balanced oil balanced hydration and its follicle size usually is very small its appearance is very uniform it has no or very rare blemishes it feels soft smooth smooth texture and it usually has good elasticity how is normal skin treated well it's needs maintenance which i mentioned that just a second ago maintenance and prevention with treatments is super important so yes cleansing exfoliating nourishing and of course protecting the skin why well body systems functioning holistically for balance skin types very common so this skin type is very common in early 20s and 30s but remember it can change over time and how does it feel to be God's favorite. I'm just kidding. Let's keep going. A tip for normal skin would be to introduce anti-aging products as clients mature. Remember, normal skin will often become drier with age and always reinforce the use of sunscreen. All right, next up we have combination skin, which I must say very commonly seen in the treatment room. So as far as oil balance, it is very moderate to high. Hydration, good to dehydrated. Follicle size is usually larger in the T-zone than cheeks or the sides of the face. So again, larger in the T-zone than on the cheeks and the sides of the face. Its appearance, it can have buildup of dead skin cells and oil in the pores around the nose, but dry or flaky outside of the T-zone and some blemishes and comedones may possibly be present. How does it feel? Well, it does feel oilier again in the center of the T-zone than the sides of the face. How is combination skin usually treated? Well, cleansing, more regular exfoliation, the use of water-based products are ideal, avoid harsh products and rough exfoliation. Why? Overproduction of oil in the T-zone also may have normal oil production in the T-zone and dehydrated skin on the sides of the face. What would be a tip for combination skin? Well, combination skin should be evaluated often as oil hydration balance can be disrupted by hormonal and environmental influences. And of course, we must always reinforce the use of sunscreen. Oily skin, you're up next. What does it look like and how does it feel? Its oil production is moderate to high. Hydration, it is good to also maybe possibly dehydrated. Follicle size, moderate to large. Its appearance, shiny. Comedones and blemishes may be present. How does it feel? Well, it could feel thick and firm and even uneven due to congestion. How is it treated? Regular cleansing and exfoliation and hydrating with water-based products. Treatment to balance oil production is, of course, ideal for oily skin. Why? Well, overproduction of oil, you guys, due to genetics, hormonal changes, medications, stress, or environmental factors such as skincare products or makeup that tend to be comedogenic tip what will be a tip for oily skin clients well clients with oily skin breakouts and comedones may have them on the neck back shoulders and chest also clients with oily skin age more slowly since the oil acts to protect the skin clients will need to use spf regularly of course to avoid post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation I hope you're still with me. We are now on dry skin. What does it look like and how does it feel? Oil production and hydration are both very minimal. 
follicle size is very difficult to visualize because the pores are usually very fine its appearance you guys it dry skin can look a little dull it can lack luminosity it can be a little flaky and blotchy very crepey feeling uh, rough thin and very tight usually how is it treated well oil-based products to provide protection of the acid mantle and increase the barrier function dry skin often has compromised transepidermal water loss caused by evaporation on the skin surface treatments that provide nourishment and protection are the best for dry skin why again underproduction of oil due to genetics, environmental factors, and hormones. Tip for dry skin. Dry skin may often be dehydrated. The use of emollients and humectants can bring great benefit to dry skin and of course, always use sunscreen. Differentiate the six Fitzpatrick skin types and accurately identify them. Developed by Dr. Thomas Fitzpatrick, the Fitzpatrick scale is used to measure the skin's type's ability to tolerate ultraviolet UV sun exposure. Many skin treatments protocols are based on the client's Fitzpatrick skin type. Due to racially mixed genetics, there is no true phototype classification system. Therefore, the scale is just a simple guideline. When it comes to skin treatments, everyone's level of skin's reactivity is different. Lighter skin types are generally more sensitive. Individuals with dark skin have a larger melanin deposit in the stratum corneum, which gives more protection from the sun, but dark skin type face other risks. Adverse reactions like hyper and hypopigmentation and keloid scarring may occur due to aggressive treatments. All right, you guys, so here is a look at the Fitzpatrick scale. We are going to start from number one, which is the lightest and ending with six. Remember the Fitzpatrick scale is just a simple guideline going from one through six, one being the lightest and six being the darkest. Yes, of course, there can be a 2.5, a 4.5, and so forth. So here we go. Number one, Fitzpatrick type one, blue, green eyes, Hair is usually blonde or red. Unexposed skin is very white, almost translucent. Freckles are very common. Heritage, heredity will be English, Irish, Scottish, Northern European. Skin reaction and UV exposure. You guys, if you consider yourself to be a type one, then you know that your skin always burns, peels with the burn and does not tan. If you are a type 1, you must always, everyone should, but you must always, always, always wear SPF, nothing under 50. Fitzpatrick type 2, blue, hazel, brown eyes, red, blonde, or brown hair. Unexposed skin is light. Heritage, heredity will be Scandinavian and same as Patrick type one. Skin reaction in UV exposure burns easily, usually peels, tans minimally. Fitzpatrick type three, brown eyes, dark hair, unexposed skin, light brown. Heritage, heredity, Spanish, Greek, Italian. Skin's reaction in UV exposure tans well, burns moderately. Fitzpatrick type 4, dark eyes, dark hair, unexposed skin, light brown. Heritage, heredity, Mediterranean, Asian, Hispanic. Skin reaction in UV exposure tans easily, burns minimally, experiences immediate pigment response. Fitzpatrick type 5, dark eyes, dark hair, unexposed skin, dark brown, heritage, heredity, East Indian, American, 
Indian, Hispanic, Latin American, African American, skin reaction, UV exposure, rarely burns, tans easily and significantly. Next, Fitzpatrick skin type 6. Dark eyes, dark hair, unexposed skin is dark brown, black, heritage, heredity, could be African American, aboriginal. Skin reaction and UV exposure, rarely to never burns and tans easily. Now, I want all of you guys to remember that regardless of where you fall in the Fitzpatrick scale, it is extremely important that you are suggesting recommending sun protection to all of your clients and of course yourself. Distinguish the characteristics of sensitive skin. We are constantly bombarded by environmental stimuli, stress, sun exposure, and other unhealthy elements. Sensitive skin is a condition, but can also be genetically predisposed. Sensitive skin is characterized by fragile, thin skin, and redness. Clients with a heritage that is Northern European, Fitzpatrick skin type 1, tend to have fair, light color skin that is thinner and more sensitive. It flushes easily and may appear red due to the blood flow being closer to the surface. Individuals with multicultural skin can also be naturally sensitive without the visible redness. Sensitive skin is easily irritated by products or by exposure to heat or sun. Telangiectasia, visible broken or distended dilated capillaries less than 0.5 millimeters due to the intrinsic or extrinsic causes may be noticeable on sensitive skin. These conditions are a protective visible reaction to let us know something is irritating the skin. Fragile or thin skin can also be the result of age or medication. Skin can become reactive or sensitized from sun exposure or things such as harsh products, heat, or even become dehydrated and chapped from cold weather. Sensitive or sensitized skin can be difficult to treat because of its low tolerance to products and stimulation. For example, excessive rubbing, heat, exfoliation, or extractions can cause damage and increase redness. Sensitive skin needs to be treated gently with non-irritating and calming products and treatments. It is important to find out what could be causing sensitive skin conditions by completing a thorough skin analysis. Is it a natural part of their skin condition or is it something that the client is being exposed to? Primary treatment goal for sensitive skin is to soothe, calm, and protect. Recognize the intricacies involved with treating skin of color. All Fitzpatrick skin types have the same number of melanocytes. Higher Fitzpatrick skin types have melanocytes that produce more melanin. Melanocytes comprise about 5 to 10 percent of the cells in the basal layer. Most of the differentiation is dependent on the ethnicity of the individual and their geographic location. A person who lives along the equator will have much more active melanocytes than the person who lives at the North Pole. In addition to those considerations, each of the skin types has specific characteristics. Let's talk a little bit about Fitzpatrick skin type 4. Considered to be one of the most challenging skin types to treat, has great elasticity and firmness, and does not show signs of aging as quickly as Fitzpatrick skin type 1 and 2. Can become hyperpigmented from treatments or aggressive exfoliating agents. Gentle exfoliating products are recommended may need to add melanin suppressants or other skin lighteners to skincare routine because we usually hyperpigment very easy, you guys. Require sun protection to slow down hyperpigmentation and must avoid sun exposure and use sun protection daily, of course. 
Fitzpatrick skin type 3 and 4 typically have thicker skin that is usually characterized by more oil production and needs more deep cleansing treatments. Additionally, waxing is more difficult for individuals with any Fitzpatrick skin type that has thicker hair and thicker roots in the follicle. If you want to specialize in skin of color, explore educational resources and advanced classes for this area of study. No matter what a client's skin type or ethnic background, everyone needs an individualized skincare routine, consultation, and treatment plan to maintain healthy skin. Fitzpatrick skin type 5 and 6 generally have oilier and thicker skin, but can have the same level of reactivity as the lower Fitzpatrick skin types. Reactions may be more challenging to see on darker skin, but they may be just as intense as those on lighter skin. Fitzpatrick 5 and 6 are also prone to form of hyperkeratosis known as dead skin cell buildup, which may lead to needing more exfoliation and deep pore cleansing. Fits 5 and 6 may have abnormal hypotrophic scarring, for example, keloids. Also, some protection is still necessary for higher Fitzpatricks. I hope you are following along and you're still with me. Let's identify treatment options for the neck and decollete. The skin on the neck and decollete is not the same as the skin on the face. The neck and decollete have fewer sebaceous glands than the face, so they tend to show signs of aging more quickly. The neck and decollete are more susceptible to irritation, photo damage, broken capillaries, fine lines, right tides, which are wrinkles, develop just as much on the neck and chest as the face. The term tech neck is a new phenomenon caused by the repeated movement of looking down at our cell phones or other electronic devices has created a demand for specialty topical treatments that include antioxidants, growth factor serums, and additional moisture. Be cautious when applying vitamin A or alpha hydroxy acids, also known as AHAs, products that may cause excess irritation to that area. A product such as a retinol may be fine for the face, but may be a little bit too aggressive for the neck. Remind your clients that the neck and decollete need SPF protection as much as the face. Illustrate examples of skin conditions. Many internal and external factors affect the conditions of a person's skin. Skin conditions are more than our genetic makeup. These conditions are what the esthetician is most concerned about and they are the focus of skin treatments. Some of the most common skin conditions estheticians see today are adult acne, extrinsic aging from sun exposure and the environment, and problems related to hormonal fluctuations, dehydration, which is lack of water, and pigmentation disorders are also significant concerns for clients. Other skin conditions include comedones, hyperkeratinization, and erythema, which is retinas. We can improve some of these conditions, you guys, through regularly scheduled skin treatments by using specialized products and by avoiding the factors that affect the condition. While performing a skin analysis on the client's chart, you will want to note other conditions that may possibly not be listed in the following chart. All right, you guys, so here is the skin conditions and description chart. I will not be reading everything that is listed on this chart, but I do want to point out a few. And by the way, we have already discussed pretty much all of the ones that are listed on this chart in previous chapters. But let's start with acne. Acne is sebaceous breakout from hormonal changes or other factors. The next one I do want to point out is the term asphyxiated. Asphyxiated are smokers. What smokers have asphyxiated skin, you guys, from lack of oxygen, characterized by clogged pores and wrinkles, dull and lifeless looking skin, can be yellowish or gray in color. D, 
dehydrated. What does dehydrated mean? Well, dehydrated is lack of water caused by the environment, medications, topical agents, aging, or dehydrating drinks such as caffeine and alcohol. Erythema, we pointed out earlier that erythema is redness caused by inflammation. On the second page, we have hyperpigmentation right in the middle. Hyperpigmentation is obviously overproduction of melanin due to at least one of the following three factors. The main one would be UV exposure from the sun, tanning beds, things like that. We also have at the very bottom the word milia. Milia is hardened pro-like collections of oil and dead skin cells trapped beneath the surface of the skin. Milia are not exposed to oxygen and have to be land sent open and to be removed. Milia are typically the size of the head of a pin. And yes, you will often have clients that do have milia. It tends to be around the eyes, just like the picture shown in the video. What else do we have on this skin conditions and description chart? We have papules, you guys. So papules are raised lesions, also called blemishes. Next, we have poikiloderma of Savat. It is a result of chronic sun exposure, okay? Chronic sun exposure, specifically along the sides of the neck, which turn a reddish brown color with a clear demarcation of untan skin under the chin. And I tried to find some pictures to put on here so that you guys could have a good visual. Next, we have um, sebaceous hyperplasia, which is a benign lesion seen in oilier areas of the face, described as a looking like a donut hole um, that cannot be extracted. And there's the picture. I thought it was a good one. So pretty interesting. And yes, I've often seen them on the forehead and on the nose. Next, one that I do not think a lot of people talk about, but yes, I actually have seen these in the treatment room and they are solar comodones. So what are solar comodones? They're basically large open comodones usually around the eyes due to sun exposure and let me tell you these are very hard to extract you really have to prepare the skin and it can be painful to the client just because it is on a very sensitive area anything that lays next around the eyes is very sensitive but you knew that already and of course, next we have telangiectasia. So what is telangiectasia and what does it look like? So there's a picture there, you guys, visible broken or distended capillaries that are less than 0.5 millimeters due to intrinsic or extrinsic causes. So there you have it. I hope you are finding all of this information helpful and you are liking all the pictures. So you guys, being aware of what can affect the skin will help you determine why a client may be experiencing problems. Often skin conditions are due to more than one influence. The esthetician, meaning you, must evaluate multiple causes, both external and internal, to correct or improve a skin condition. Each client is different and the skin of various clients may respond differently to the exact same treatment. Let's discuss some external factors that affect the skin. Habits, diet, and stress all play a part in our health, which in turn is reflected in our skin's appearance. Skin conditions can be caused by allergies, reactions, medications, medical conditions, and other external or extrinsic factors. Lack of exercise, lack of sleep, smoking, medications, and drugs will have negative effects both inside and out. Sun damage is the main external cause of aging. All of these factors contribute to skin problems and can be detrimental to maintaining a healthy and attractive complexion. What are some external effects on the skin, you guys? Let's go over them. The first one on the list is UV exposure, sun exposure, tanning beds, environmental exposure such as pollutant and of course air quality, environmental so climate and humidity, 
poor maintenance, inappropriate skin care, misuse of products or treatments, over exfoliation, and harsh products. You have no idea of how many times you will possibly come across a client who misuses products and they are using products that are not appropriate for their skin type. So this is very, very true. Allergies and reactions to environmental factors or products, and we have photosensitivity to the sun for medication or products. Now let's discuss some internal factors that affect the skin. Our body's internal or intrinsic health affects how we feel, as well as how our body and skin look and perform. Free radicals, which are unstable molecules in the body, dehydration, which is lack of water, vitamin deficiency, improper nutrition, genetics, hormones, puberty, pregnancy, and menopause all affect our skin's well-being. Hormonal imbalance can lead to sensitivity, dehydration, hyperpigmentation, and microcirculation problems that affect capillaries. So what are some more internal effects on the skin, you guys? Well, genetics and ethnicity influence conditions, free radicals, dehydration, vitamin deficiency, hormones, medical conditions such as chronic illness, cancer, systemic disease, diabetes, impaired immune functions, puberty, aging, glycation, pregnancy, and menopause. I know you're probably wondering, so what are some things that I can do and my clients can do to have better healthy skin habits? Well, here you have it. Top 10 healthy habits for the skin. One, avoid sun exposure. Use sunscreen daily. Eat a balanced diet. Do not smoke. Avoid excessive alcohol. Drink plenty of water. Get plenty of rest. Stay active and exercise regularly. And yes, I know it's hard, you guys. Use beneficial skincare products and regular home care routine. Get professional skincare treatments to maintain the results of your home care routine and, of course, your regimen. And two more, effectively treat the signs of aging, blemishes, and other skin conditions. Staying on top of appointments and routines is extremely important. And number 10, implement stress relievers and maintain a calm, positive attitude. Determine treatment contraindications through evaluation, analysis, and consultation. Certain treatments and skincare products may be contraindicated for a particular client, and it is your responsibility to evaluate the appropriateness of treatment and skincare products after your skin analysis and review of the client's medical history. These contraindications are factors that prohibit a treatment from being performed or the use of a certain skincare product being used on the client's skin. Certain treatments could cause harmful or negative side effects to those who have a specific medical or skin conditions. Communicable diseases, skin disorders, medical conditions, medications, and skin irritation can all contraindicate or prohibit a service or use of a skincare product. The client may list a communicable disease on the client questionnaire. But remember, recognizing diseases is vital to avoiding causing harm to clients or to yourself. Medications or topical exfoliating agents may make the skin too sensitive for facials or waxing, so you recognizing and knowing this is very important. Certain medical conditions, illnesses, and diseases such as cancer may contraindicate any stimulation to the face or body. Allergies and sensitivities to skincare products may be evaluated. Clients who have obvious skin conditions such as open wounds, cold sores like herpes simplex, or other abnormal looking conditions should be referred to a medical provider for evaluation and approval for aesthetic treatment. 
All right, you guys, so here's a chart of contraindications for skin treatments. The first one on the list are certain skin diseases, disorders, or irritation must be considered individually based on the client's overall health. Also, the use of isotretinoin. The client must have completed isotretinoin six months prior. Next, skin thinning or exfoliating topical medication, including Retin-A, Retinova, and everything listed on the list. You want to avoid waxing, exfoliation, or any type of peeling treatment for a minimum of a week. Next, we have pregnancies, no electrical treatments, peels, chemical peels, or aggressive, the use of aggressive ingredients without the client's medical provider's written permission, you guys. Next, metal bone pens or plates in the body. You want to avoid all electrical treatments in the area where the pen or plate is located. Obviously, medical professional consent is needed prior to treatment. Next, we have pacemakers or heart irregularities, you want to avoid all electrical treatments that require a grounding pad. Next on the list are allergies. Any allergic substance listed on the health history should be strictly avoided. Become knowledgeable about ingredients, clients with allergy to aspirin. Again, clients with an allergy to aspirin should not use products or have treatments using salicylic acid. They are both derived from willow bark. Clients with multiple allergies should use fragrance-free products designed for sensitive skin. Next, seizures or epilepsy you want to avoid all electrical or light based treatments that pulsate medical professional consent is best to treatment if the client has a history of seizures next the use of oral steroids like cortisones such as prednisone avoid any stimulating exfoliating treatments or waxing as skin may be more fragile and bruise easier until the client has been off the medication for a minimum of two weeks. Next, an autoimmune disease such as lupus, vitiligo, avoid any harsh or stimulating treatments or skincare products. Next on this list is diabetes, you guys. It is extremely important that your clients have their diabetes and insulin levels under control. And the last one will be blood thinning medication. Making sure your clients fill out their health history form is very important prior to treatment. All right, client consultation. A thorough client consultation is important for many reasons. The most important is to determine that a treatment is appropriate for the client or that the skincare products will benefit the client's skin. A consultation will help you determine why a client may be unhappy with their skin or appearance. Health, lifestyle, occupation, and more affect the skin. Many times we have to act as a detective to try to determine why the client is having a certain skin problem. The more you know about the client, the more you can make appropriate recommendations for skin care and treatments. Next, forms. You should have at least three forms for a new client. Intake form, also called a client questionnaire, health history form, and a consultation card. Clients should complete a confidential intake form that should be updated at each visit. The form discloses the client's health history, all products and medications, medical conditions, any known allergies or sensitivities, along with their at-home skincare routine and skincare treatments the client has recently received that could adversely affect treatment. Information should also include important details about the clients, including their name, age, occupation, diet, and lifestyle habits. All right, you guys, so here are some client forms examples to give you all a visual of some of the information that is usually asked on the forms. Most working estheticians do go paperless, and honestly, I believe it is the best option. You can create your own forms and consent forms and have them integrated into your booking system. Therefore, your clients are able to fill out all of the information, all of the forms prior to their appointment, giving you plenty of time to review and look for any contraindications, if any. Hope this helps.
Let's go over some questions to ask during the consultation. What is the reason for your visit? What brought the client in? Is it for a treatment or relaxation? What are your skin concerns? What are your skin care goals? Are you preparing for a special occasion? If so, when is it? What is your home skin care routine? How many products does the client use at home? What are the ingredients and how often are they being used? Have you had treatment before? Is this the client's first treatment? Do you have allergies to products or scents? How does your skin feel during different times of the day? What is the degree of oiliness or dryness? Do you wear sunscreen? If so, what SPF value? 15, 30, 50. Tell me about your diet. Do you eat a healthy diet? How much processed food do you eat? How often do you eat out? How much water do you drink? What is your activity level? Are you often outdoors? Do you smoke? Any other allergies? How stressful is your lifestyle? Are you under a lot of stress? Have you had any aesthetic procedures prior? If so, how long ago were you happy with the results? The skin care consultation and skin analysis is your moment to make the clients aware of what you note about their skin condition and what services or products you offer that could help benefit them. The consultation is also a marketing and educational opportunity to introduce services and products to the client. Think about how you can help the client through treatment, home care suggestion, and preventative measures. Conduct the consultation, discuss what you see with your client, and give recommendations during the analysis or after the treatment. Perform a skin analysis. Knowing how to analyze the skin is the first step in providing successful skincare treatments and recommending effective skincare products, identifying conditions and contraindications, as well as providing thorough consultations and charting clients' notes, are all elements of good aesthetic practices. Educated clients on healthy habits and the causes of skin conditions is part of the service. Products, ingredients, different types of facials, and a home care regimen for preventative maintenance are all beneficial in caring for the skin. A series of treatments may be necessary to effectively help the client's condition. Remember that 20 years of sun damage cannot be helped overnight. Making sure that the client has realistic expectations is important and that the result may take months to see. Skin analysis may seem challenging, but practice and experience will build confidence in using this essential skill. Knowing skin types, conditions, and the factors affecting the skin's health, as well as interview skills that encourage your client to open up about their skin care regimen, enables you to perform an accurate skin analysis. Use a magnifying light to examine the skin more thoroughly. A woods lamp is a filter black light that is used to illuminate skin disorders, fungi, bacterial disorders, and deeper levels of pigmentation or an electronic imaging system may also be used. Tips on how to start a skin analysis. Number one, ask the client what skin type do they consider themselves to have. Continue by confirming by looking at the client's pore size on the T-zone. Number two, TEDC. Look for texture, elasticity, dehydration, and condition. Number three, continue the consultation asking questions while analyzing, analyze pore size, hydration level, pigmentation, muscle tone. Are there any broken capillaries? Do you see any fine lines and wrinkles? Do you see any signs of skin disorders? These are all things that you are looking for while performing. You're touching, you're feeling, you're using the magnifying lamp so that you're able to get a closer look. Remember to ask if they use Retin-A 
and glycolic acid. Skin tends to be a little bit more sensitive when such products are used. Review the client questionnaire, verify information if needed. Now you guys, doing this and performing skin analysis is going to take some time, but if you're a student, practice, 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 practice with clients, practice with each other in class, practice with your models until you become more comfortable and more confident and practice those interviewing skills. Well, you guys, that is it for this video. I hope you're finding all of this information helpful. Thank you for watching and listening. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend. And again, if you are new, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for your continued support. And you guys, let's keep going. Let's keep growing. And I'll see you on the next one.